This is Dr. Scott McLean and this is a YouTube video about the dental implant temp shell. And this temp shell will be demonstrated in how it's used after placing implants with uh, more than 35 Newton torque. During today's presentation we'll be placing an implant in the number 9 position or 2-1 using guided surgery. We're going to use Nobel Clinician to do so. But we're going to use this software to generate what's called a temp shell shown here. You can see the temp shell is going to be placed at the time of the implant placement. So we're going to place a very tight placement here. You can see if we look at the lingual aspect coming up along this area. It's very tight with this canal. We can also see the buccal plate on the other side is very thin. So we're going to place this implant in the very exact position using guided surgery and then use the temp shell to make the temporary. You must request a temp shell from the lab so you're going to request what's called a lab design and they're going to design the tooth and uh, this will be made into your temp shell. So as you can see here I'm sending this off to the lab then the lab's going to receive the file through a digital network which is secure and uh, HIPAA compliant and then they'll start to design where we want to place the temp shell. So they'll do a number of different um, bring this out, tuck this in, and they can use tools to kind of paint and erase and uh, kind, of, uh, kind of move the tooth so it's going to look as ideal as possible. Check the occlusion and get it all so that uh, then the restorative doctor or the surgical doctor can have a look and see that this is what they really want. So once they'll do this, they'll use Novell Design send it and then come back in so they'll do what's called a share so when the file goes back to the doctor then the doctor's going to have a look and make sure that it's okay. I can then have a look at this in my own Nobel Clinician software and you can see and I'm able to see it's a bit bulky so I want them to cut it back a little bit but I could do this chair side as well but they may as well cut it back and uh, then I'll bring the tissue forward. So I'll say yes it's a go so then the lab will then start to put on the uh, rests that are next to the adjacent teeth. So they'll select thickness of these rests and fabricate these rests so that it will be supporting the temp shell in the position for pickup over top of the implant. So we know where the access is going to be in the lingual of this temp shell. We also will know the position of it and it's going to be based on occlusion. Now what the lab will do is request an STL print file and this print file or mill file will be used to fabricate the temp shell in their own dental lab. So this will be done in a local kind of atmosphere, so not sending it to Nobel BioCare. So this high resolution file is then generated so that they can either mill or print this temp shell for you. And then this will be ideally positioned so that I'll actually use a template to position the implant. Then I'll use the temp shell to go on top and so putting these all together we know exactly where we're going at the time of surgery. So predicting where the soft tissue is going to be, predicting where the implant is going to be, this is how it's going to line up. So we can see here on the, the printed model that the temp shell is lined up using the adjacent teeth. So this is also so that we know where the implant is going to be. So once I start the case I'll start by placing this in the patient's mouth and checking that it actually does fit. And here you can see that it does. The beauty of this technique is we're using a guided approach. So I'll still flap the tissue because I want to preserve the tissue and bring some of the lingual tissue out to the facial so I can make this uh, an aesthetic outcome for the patient because we want to bulk this tissue out. So we may as well use this tissue that's going to be where the implant osteotomy is going to be rather than just cut um, mid-crestal. So as I flap this back, I'm going to do minimal flap because this is a guided surgery. I don't need to see completely up the facial bone. But I'm going to punch the lingual tissue a little bit. Uh, so by using the template that we're fabricating using Nobel Clinician, this will guide every drill. So the template, once it's in position, will guide incremental widths of drills to the proper length so that we can position this implant in the proper depth and angulation for ideal surgery. Here I'm using a tissue punch just to punch the lingual aspect so that I don't have tissue tags going into the osteotomy 
during the preparation, in particular uh, during the placement of the implant, we don't want any epithelial tissue down inside of the osteotomy. Now the surgery becomes uh, just like you're using a GPS to travel in your car. We have a GPS that tells us where the teeth are, where the bone is, where the buccal plate is, where that lingual canal that's so tight. This is a very precise surgery, so it allows us to get into that position so that we can really deliver excellence for the patient. So once we push the template in, we'll lift the, the facial tissue out of the way to make sure that we're getting into the bone and not uh, damaging the soft tissue at all. So for this narrow platform implant, we're gonna go through a series of drills using drill guides that fit into the template and so this will guide us to the correct depth and angulation. You can see the markings on the drill which are actually 10 millimeters longer so that it gives us the ability to really predictably place this implant in the space in uh, exact precision and exact accuracy. So getting the two we get into a position that's going to be ideal for that temp shell as well and ideal for supporting soft tissue. We'll put the second drill guide in and start to do the process again and so we're gradually widening this out without generating a lot of heat. We're using nice sharp drills here to cut up a very precise osteotomy. We want to make sure that you're doing this so that we can really protect the bone during the treatment. The water is being carried by the drill. It's carried up the kind of cutout part of the drill. So we don't want to drill at a high speed here. We want to get this done and, and really protect the patient. Once we put the third drill guide in, I've decided not to go to the full length, so I'm not going all the way to 13, based on the feeling of the bone. And so this is allowing me to still stay in that position, but I just want to go slow and be very, very precise here. We're going to be placing a 3.75 by 13 millimeter Nobel Parallel CC implant. So this is a very tight area on this patient, so we're going to choose a very Kind of a more small thread with less pitch and um, so this this way we're going to have a little bit less pressure on the bone especially in this light bone area this is a very uh, precise placement i don't think i'd want to be doing this without having a template this is kind of one of those areas that this needs exact placement so as we carry this to the patient's mouth we're going to use what's called an implant mount and then a connection to implant and this is going to place the implant nine millimeters above the template because we have to take off one millimeter for the surgical uh, guides that we were using. And as we check this implant, we can see that when we're going through that the implant is actually torquing at about 45, 50 Newtons, which is great for doing immediate placement based on the literature. I'll use a CC bone mill. The CC bone mill is gonna just tidy up the bone on top of this implant because we've positioned the implant so that we can have the height of the implant to be um, at the ideal position for doing the restorative and not uh, necessarily just placing it at bone level. And you'll see that by doing this we'll just tidy up the bone making sure that we can seat down the cylinder when we go to make the temporary. So this will protect the implant but allow you to bevel the bone down to the implant in a design that will match this shape. So this is the temporary cylinder. Now they do have new temporary cylinders that snap on. I'd recommend you use those now. I didn't have access to this uh, when I did this video. This is my first attempt at the temp shell and so I'm using more of my old technique. But the new ones will snap down and then they have a, a drill that actually comes up through the cylinder. It's very, very neat and that will be one of my next videos. So I use some chlorhexidine. I want to make sure when I'm preparing things and drilling temporaries that I'm using chlorhexidine to rinse, rinse off microparticles or any bacteria or any kind of problems that start to develop. So you can see I cut off the cylinder and I can count the rings based on how the design was in Nova Clinician. And uh, we can see that we can count the rings and have this positioned and cut prior to surgery because we know how deep the implant is, how tall the temp shell is, everything is all worked out in 3D. It's just absolutely fantastic how this temporary technique is and so it's not uh, you know difficult it's it becomes very predictable and very easy to do. Looking at the Nobel Clinician software I'm able to prep the temp shell to make my access channel 
prior to even uh, going near the patient. So you can see that right away I know that it's going to fit. And this is just so incredible. It was really very cool to work with and uh, quite exciting to be honest with you. And uh, this is, uh, I've been hand building temporaries. This is a very revolutionary way to make a temporary and to make it so that it's going to be simple for many people to do. Now I've placed some adhesive inside of the temp shell so I'll be able to bond some flowable resin in here. If you did have the snap-on um, temporary cylinder then you just put that on and put this over top and pick it up and then go right through and that's very cool too. Here what I'm going to do is just put a little bit of uh, temporary material so a little bit of the flow. I'm using Luxa flow here and just place it in the facial aspect and I've made it so that I can go through with my screwdriver and still have that in position. So when we place this on top, I'm going to pick up a little bit on the facial. I want to make sure we dry it up a little bit, but try to get it in there. So I'll put my screwdriver in, of course, having some floss around the screwdriver because we don't want them to swallow that. And I'll put a little bit of uh, 4x4 gauze in just to kind of keep components or screwdrivers from going down their throat. But what you'll see is that I can now take the flowable and inject around and pick up the cylinder, which is uh, very simple to do. We'll do a little bit of bonding. The wings are holding the temp shell in place, so I don't have to kind of position it or hold it. The wings will hold it, and when I remove it, you can see that I can now start to fill underneath down to the line on top of the temporary cylinder. So the titanium is going to travel through the tissue we know that the titanium is going to be at that point where the connective tissue is going to be 1.5 millimeters approximately and then you have the uh, acrylic is going to be up in the junctional epithelium area so that this this allows it the, to heal with the body because the body does want to have something like the titanium interface or zirconia interface but we, we want to have that titanium interface going through into the body so we can get great healing once that heals, then we can come back and start to make our final restoration. But you see now we're creating emergence profile. And the emergence profile is going to be what controls how the soft tissue is going to look. So I can basically lift or, you know, put it up or down just like an airplane flap. I can lift the soft tissue that I'm going to move to the facial up and down to try to mimic the adjacent tooth, the number 8 or the 1-1. One, one. So here we can start to kind of cure this, get that shape worked out. We'll suture things down and then have a very great healing appliance here. So this is going to be not only providing the patient quality of life during treatment, but also giving them the ability to heal with this temp in place. So now I'll cut the wings off. You could sometimes break them off with your finger, I'm sure, but I'll cut them off with the 8850KR diamond, smooth this down, polish it up a bit. The lab's already polished the facial surface quite nicely for me, so a lot of the polishing has been done. We'll go back and insert this, put a couple of sutures in, and then the patient is going to go heal. So this is a very predictable way. So we don't want to have any occlusion on this tooth. We don't want to have functional loading at all. So no protrusive, no working, non-working. If anything, cut it a little bit short. The patient will still be delighted because they'll have a temporary in place, but we do not want this to be functioning. Even though it's quite strong, the patient should be told to kind of stay away from it. So if we can see this, it looks quite nice. We'll check the occlusion, and then the patient is you know, all done. We'll put some uh, Teflon in, and in this case, we'll put some Firmin in, and then the patient is gone out the door. This is Dr. Scott McLean, and this has been a YouTube video about implant dentistry. Be sure to check out my Instagram account at Dr. Scott McLean for some quick tips.